Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Wednesday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there, staying safe, staying cool, staying weather aware. It's been quite active, as we know, over the last several days. Uh, the rain and storms across the southeast. We have ongoing storms right now <clears throat> across areas of the high plains, the south central U.S. We'll watch a nasty line of storms that has the potential to work its way through the entire state of Texas. It won't affect the entire state of Texas, but it will basically go from one end of Texas to the other end of Texas. So, hope you guys are aware of what's going on. There is an enhanced risk. We'll talk about that very briefly here in a second. But most of this video is going to be discussing what happens tomorrow onward. I'm watching a sneaky tornado threat for the eastern Carolinas. More severe weather for maybe some of the same areas that are seeing severe weather this afternoon and this evening. And then we'll talk a little bit after that into Friday and Saturday. But just know that I've had a, you know, a couple people ask me about those days. Um, we The details just qu aren't quite there, so we'll speak on it, but we'll kind of speak in lack of detail. But we'll kind of explain what's driving this uh, in general, as we have a full-fledged trough ejection across the middle of the country, and how this could bring severe weather to parts of the country that typically see at this time of the year. So we'll talk on that. We'll give you an update on the tropics, and then we'll let you get on with the rest of your evening. If you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If you notice something is different behind me, for you regular viewers, <clears throat> it's because there is. Of course, I've always made my videos in my bedroom. It's never been a real professional backdrop, that's for sure. Um, but you know, you guys have accepted me. Most people have. I'm sure there's some people who click on my channel, they immediately see my backdrop, and they're like, "I oh, know, not a professional. This is not going to be good." I could see many people doing that, which is cool. You know, if people want to do that, hey, I'm not going to stop them. But if you notice, it's different. It is. My wife rearranged our room. I like it, um, but I don't. The reason I don't like it is because it's everything's not parallel behind me. I got my bed that's like over there, and then my uh, dresser's right there. So it just nothing's parallel behind me anymore. So it's kind of messing me up. But regardless, it is what it is. And one of these days in the future, I'll be able to have my own little office uh, designated for my YouTube channel. One day in the future, you know, we're working our way there. So. But, uh, but that being said, if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put it in the comments below so I can do that and so others can do so too. If you hear any thunder, maybe see some flashes of lightning behind me. It's because we're getting a pretty good thunderstorm right now. It's pouring. I can hear it outside my door. Uh, it's always nice to get a summer thunderstorm in the evening here. Uh, but there is an enhanced risk between now and tomorrow morning for the orange area. Some big time storms are already firing up right now. Please stay safe. There's already been reports of some tornadoes, I believe, in southeast Wyoming. Uh, looks like a couple storm chasers got on to a, just a very photogenic tornado. Stay safe out here, especially down here in Texas. Um, we'll watch um, as what storms are ongoing right now in this region will probably develop into a complex of storms and sweep uh, eastward, but we'll also watch down here. There's an enhanced risk, and this is really because of wind. Um, you could have... Um, a, a mini derecho that forms down here and develops and develops and then sweeps southward southeastward into texas let's hope that doesn't happen we'll see how it grows up scale as it goes downstream into these regions so hopefully it does not end up being bad but please be aware i talked about this in this morning's video uh, i mentioned many towns and cities so please be aware of that tomorrow and this could change as of now we have a pretty large marginal risk basically from North of Miami, all the way to just south of Raleigh, all the way up almost in almost almost uh, to Virginia to the Virginia Beach area in uh, southeast Virginia. I could see this extending into southeast Virginia for sure. You got a slight risk where they're much more confident on severe weather, uh, basically in the uh, uh, central to high plains, all the way into the southern plains, high plains into this region. And, uh, you know, you're, you're basically going to have a chance to see severe weather in some of the same regions that are seeing it right now. Tornado threat, you got two, 2% 2 risk, one in this slight risk. And then check it out. You got a 2% marginal risk. Okay. In fact, you know, I would say <laughs> this is a tornado driven marginal risk. If that's even a thing, it really is not. Uh, but you do have a chance of wind. You do have a chance of a tornado in this region. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were, were seeing this over the last 24 hours. We were There was some chatter about it here in the Carolinas, some local storm chasers that are chomping at the bit to go chase something, uh, including me, but I'm definitely not going to probably pull the trigger on it tomorrow unless something substantially changes, then I won't be able to help myself, of course. But you got a 2% risk of a tornado in this green area. This, you know, goes almost, almost all the way down to, you know, Jacksonville, all the way almost to Raleigh. 
and all these regions in green right into here. So let's talk about this. We'll start off tomorrow morning. We'll wake up tomorrow morning with tropical downpours everywhere. There's a big question on, you know, how quick does this convection shower and storm activity move through? Are you already getting a tornado threat materializing? This is around 1, 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. You got, you know, just the same kind of look as you got today. But you'll have a different You'll have some more oomph to the atmosphere. You'll have a wind field in the eastern Carolinas. You'll have a flow aloft and low to mid levels that support some kinematics, which is that wind energy, need, wind energy needed for a damaging wind threat and a low end tornado threat. So really any of these storms uh, from north of Tallahassee up through Savannah, the low country of South Carolina, maybe all the way to Columbia, South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Wilmington, all across um, the eastern areas of the Carolinas, really. You do have to watch these just waves of showers and storms that will have some spin to them. I can almost guarantee you, if we don't have one tornado tomorrow, I can tell you these storms in the eastern Carolinas especially are going to be spinning. It's just, you know, are we going to actually get any kind of tornadoes or anything like that? But just be aware, you know, what you're seeing here does not look that scary or anything like that. But just be aware that any of these little cells, they'll probably be very low top supercells, meaning... Um, if you were to see a tornado, it's going to be very sloppy looking. It's not going to be photogenic. And it all, honestly will just probably look like a lowering and uh, just some cloud motion. So it's just one of those days. And that's how typical tropical tornadoes are. They're normally very brief. They're very weak normally. And, you know, like they just don't last long. Um, but just be careful all the way, you know, late morning, all the way to afternoon hours, tomorrow evening, you still have numerous showers and storms ongoing. And you really look at the environmental, uh, you know, factors and what's going to this. And we'll look at the NAM too. You know, the NAM's kind of the same thing. It likes more of a, just a consolidated chunk of convection that kind of blasts through North Carolina and Southeast uh, Virginia. And it really doesn't have a whole lot of convection developing after this moves through, but anything that does develop could have a spin to it. You got some storms down here in the low country, some storms up here um, into the sand hills of North Carolina. And then we get later into the overnight hours tomorrow night. And you got to watch these, watch these cells. Okay. But you look at the environmental players going into this, you look at the surface moisture this is a thermodynamic. And what I want you to know is we'll start out tomorrow morning and we'll get all the way to about the prime heating of the day right here. You have a bit of a boundary that separates very moist air, tropical dew points here in the seventies. And then humid air, dew points in the 60s, upper 50s, a lot of 60s. So that's humid air, but that's not tropical humidity that you see once you get dew points well into the 70s. So you'll have a moist atmosphere here in southeast Georgia, eastern, the eastern half of South Carolina and North Carolina, all the way up into southeast Virginia, all the way up into the Delmarva regions and southern areas of New Jersey. Very moist air with a bit of an upper trough digging here. There's a surface boundary right in here separating very moist air but just somewhat moist air. So with those higher dew points, what about your cape levels? Well, you know, they're not going to be colossal type uh, cape levels. Mixed layer cape in general reaching just over a thousand joules per kilogram as you get into the afternoon hours. It depends on how scattered about the convection is. But I mean, you got some cape values, you know, pushing 1500 joules per kilogram. You could have some higher ones getting to a 2000 joules per kilogram. If you get the sun to come out at all, it's probably not going to be good news. Uh, but, you know, you get over here in the, in the western sections of the Carolinas and northern Georgia, there's there's really, you know, below 100 joule per, joules per kilogram cape. Um, definitely a lower severe weather threat. Higher in this region, some brief damaging wind gusts and then a low-end tornado threat. And you look at the kinematics. Um, on basically the eastern side of this boundary, you're going to have a kinematic wind field. Low-level wind profiles, low-level jet, you know, 30 to 40 knots. So you get any kind of breaks in the clouds, any kind of sun, any kind of instability in this region, I could see this bumping up to a 5% risk tomorrow because you do have a pretty decent wind profile with this. You go from like hardly no winds aloft to a pretty stout flow in the, in the low to mid levels that you're seeing in these purple colors. Okay, so you got the wind energy there somewhat. Um, in the all the way up in the southeast of Virginia. That's why I think the tornado rest will actually get extended a little bit further north. So please watch out in this area tomorrow for sure. And you look at the updraft felicity swath, it's not very impressive from the H2R model whatsoever. It's really not. Um, you actually look at the NAM too. The NAM is, you know, a little bit more. It shows, 
you know, little areas where you could have some rotating updrafts, meaning a spin to these storms, but not over overly impressive. So we'll see what happens. This could increase. I could see this increasing. Um, starting off really into the wee hours of the morning to, tonight into tomorrow morning, I think you'll have a big complex of thunderstorms rolling out of Colorado into western Kansas, uh, diving down to Oklahoma into that morning hours and into the early afternoon hours. And I think that you got to watch out for these storms. How much will they be held together by the time you get into tomorrow afternoon in western Oklahoma? And then we'll get a little bit further into the afternoon and evening hours. You got some storms up in the Dakotas, but I would watch out. These storms right along the front range, basically just east of the higher elevations with the Rockies shoot up into Denver, Colorado. Uh, but these storms could produce a lot of hail. They could produce a tornado and they could produce some damage you win. So please be aware of this in eastern Colorado tomorrow afternoon. You see these little uh, sails popping up here. Um, they could definitely be quite intense. Some very photogenic storms. A tornado is possible. We've already seen it today that these can produce tornadoes. Same kind of driver tomorrow. Not a whole lot's changing. So, I mean, look at this area of storms continuing to dive down. And if you look at the Storm Prediction Center, it has a general risk of severe storms tomorrow into this region. I can almost guarantee you a marginal risk will get extended further down into northern Texas into here. So go on and expect that as this um, the models are really latching on to the idea of a lot of convection into this region tomorrow. So Friday, there is a severe weather threat. A trough ejection, be a trough ejection begins. Therefore, the dynamics build into this region right into the classic high plains kind of setup. Um, the terrain is uh, next to perfect. The only thing that you're probably struggling with is a um, is road networks, but if you're a storm chaser and you love chasing in June, typically you can get very photogenic storms up here, lower populated areas, lower risk for some of these storms to impact higher populated areas. But I really think that you know you could get some get some big time storms and this slight risk into the high plains uh, as we get into Friday. We'll get more in detail on this when we know more, probably starting into tomorrow. But just know that severe weather is expected in this region. We'll get into Saturday, this shifts more into the Midwest, Iowa, southern Minnesota, um, eastern sections of North Dakota, eastern Nebraska, and even down into portions of Kansas and Missouri. 15% risk of severe weather. What that is, not quite sure yet, but we will find out in time. Um, so, and really what's driving this, guys, is, you know, you see the blue here, that's troughing right here, troughing, uh, ridging up here. Ridge is built over the middle of the country as we start this off Friday morning bringing very warm temperatures. And then you see what happens. This little blob of darker blue moves northeast. That's what we call a trough ejection. This trough ejects, pieces, piece of energy basically ejects off the base of this trough. And if you see the little pressure gradients right in here, kind of bubbling up, kind of bending and stuff like that, little circles. I kind of talked about this last week. When you have just more straight lines, uh, that's probably you have more neutral, not much storm development. But the more a kind of vigorous they look aggressive they look where they're bending and wobbling and, and weaving right into here that tells us that there's probably some weather going on here and that is going to be the case right into this region and then again for saturday we'll watch for storms right into this region right here as the basically this trough ejection goes from uh is probably associated with some kind of low pressure and basically goes from southwest to northeast and then it goes more so from west to east as it flies on top of this ridging right in here and then kind of squeezes in between. And then, you know, we get into Sunday and I could see a severe weather threat somewhere in the, uh, you know, the, probably Illinois, Indiana, maybe the upper Midwest somewhere. I think as we get into Sunday, you will have a risk of strong to severe storms into this region. And this is when you could potentially get rain. In fact, you look at the precipitation in this region. Here it is. You see that low pressure, right? Watch how, how, how it ejects off the Rockies right in here um, Friday evening. And then it goes over areas of the plains, the Midwest. Here's that low pressure right here. You're getting into Sunday. And this is bringing much needed rain, maybe to areas of the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, the upper Midwest. So we'll even watch. This could eventually bring some severe weather into Monday across areas of the Ohio Valley. So I'll give you an update on the tropics as the 5 p.m. update. This is a 65 mile per hour tropical storm Brett. It's doing pretty decent today. Um, and if you look at the update from this, the worst weather is on the northern side of the center of low pressure. Uh, you got you now have tropical storm warnings up for areas of the Lesser Antilles, 
uh, just um, just still tropical storm watches in the yellow like Barbados, places like that. Um, but this is now it's still expected to maintain tropical storm status as it starts to get a little bit deeper into the central Caribbean. So it did have a D here for tropical depression earlier, but there has been some model guidance that suggests that this may be able to withstand the brutal shear here in the Eastern Caribbean. So that might be new news that develops here in the next 24 hours. But here it is, Tropical Storm Brett, looking pretty darn healthy. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mid-grade, stronger tropical storm. Remember, it goes 65 mile per hour tropical storm. A 70 mile per hour storm is still a tropical storm. And then the next criteria is it doesn't go up one mile per hour. It goes in five mile per hour um, increments and uh, bump up. So sometimes, of course, it increases 10 to 15, 20, 20 miles per hour from update to update when you have rapid intensification. But in this case, does it go up another 10 miles per hour and reach hurricane status? Not sure, but I mean, it's looking pretty decent right now. But I love looking here at Zoom Earth. Uh, by tonight, 2 a.m. update, still forecast to be a 65 mile per hour storm. Still 65 mile per hour storm forecasted for tomorrow afternoon. And then we expect this basically sometime tomorrow p.m. to begin to affect St. Lucia, uh, Martinique, uh, Dominica, and all these areas of the Lesser Antilles. But it's probably going to go right between these two islands right here of the Lesser Antilles that I just mentioned. And uh, models are really zoning in on this. But I really think the island of Martinique is going to get hit pretty good because if it go takes this track, now if it was go further down here, that means St. Lucia would probably get hit hard. Martinique, uh, Martinique would probably get uh, hit pretty good too. Um, sorry if I mix up my um, uh, sounding out words and stuff. I feel like I'm doing a decent job at some of these lesser and tealy names. Um, I like to say lesser and tealy too. Um, <laughs> you know, um, uh, sounding out things has always been a struggle for me, guys. But here we are. If it does take this route right here, it's probably the northern part of the storm is probably going to hit this island right here, which means uh, you could have some nasty weather. And uh, Martinique, for sure, um, as uh, the northern part of the storm is definitely more intense than any other portion of this storm. So you guys will definitely get tropical storm uh, force conditions. Um, but you notice they got tropical storm warnings up for both islands. So we'll watch. But if you look at the satellite um, on what's going on right now, these blacker colors you're seeing here and even some white that symbolizes very cold cloud tops, which means we're getting some deep convection, convection that's reached into the higher levels of the atmosphere here, which symbolizes colder tops. So this is dealing with some westerly shear. You can see actually the clouds over here getting pushed off back to the east. It, it's, you're getting shear out of the west, and this is pushing this to the east. So we'll see how this is affected overnight. This is 93L that still has not de developed into a tropical depression yet. But um, this is Brett right now. Brett is doing pretty well. It's a kind of, of a, more of a compact tropical storm, but it's going to bring some pretty nasty conditions to the Lesser Antilles for sure. So be careful out there. That's all I got. God bless and have yourselves a fantastic ending to your day.